Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we will be focusing on Obamacare right up until the time, uh, well, hopefully till the time it's defunded or the, uh, the geniuses in the Republican Party in the House uh, decide that they're, they're not going to let the IRS get the funding it needs to run it. But uh, barring that, we're going to focus on it right up until the time the disaster takes effect. Um, one, of the, uh, one of the repercussions that we're seeing uh, uh, is doctors that are shunning insurance. They're, they're not accepting insurance. They're, they're letting patients pay for play, if you will. You need a procedure. You need a visit. You pay cash. Um, and how's that working out? Well, in Wichita, Kansas, uh, we have Dr. Uh, Nunemaker, MD, uh, Chief Medical Officer at Atlas MD Concierge Family Practice. Uh, he's doing it, so why don't we ask him? Hello, doctor. How are you, sir? I'm doing very well. How are you? I'm good. All right. So, you know, I, I see a, a lot of doctors because I'm a hypochondriac. That's well, okay. esta- well established on this show. Um, and, and, you know, to a man or a woman, they all say that they, they're, they're, they're dreading it. But um, so tell me what you've done and how it's working out, not taking any insurance and, you know, having people pay cash for, their, for your service. Sure. Well, I mean, it, to, to be honest, it's, it's working out phenomenally well. Uh, we're, we're past our 10-year goal in less than three. But, you know, th- this isn't a lot of people think maybe this is in response to Obamacare. And uh, Dr. Josh Umber and I were, had been doing market research uh, for about the last 10 or 12 years. So we had been designing this clinic model for many years, long before Obamacare was a, a twinkle in anybody's eye. Uh, and really what we did was look at the problem with healthcare, and, and in our opinion, especially primary care, there were, it was twofold. One, there aren't enough physicians, uh, primary care especially. Uh, one of the main reasons is people don't want to go into it. They're they're disincentivized because of the high uh, high workload and uh, all of the insurance hassles, and partially because of the the Balanced Budget Act of 1997. Medicare has authorized no additional funding for more residency slots. So even if medical schools allow more uh, physicians to be trained uh, or, or, or produced, I should say, they don't have anywhere to be trained. So number one, we needed to find a way to get people interested in primary care. And the second issue was insurance. And we realized that we needed to take insurance out of the position of being the main payer source for primary care, get it back to what it used to be uh, in primary care, and that's just cash. Uh, so we still recommend people have insurance, something like a high deductible plan, but what we really want people to realize is that 60, 70, 80% of the care that they need, blood pressure, diabetes, uh, arthritis care, you know, you name it, it's all primary care. It's, it can all be handled by your family doctor, you know, doesn't need a specialist. So we can reduce significant costs and, you know, we have multiple examples here in, in Wichita, but you know, some companies saving uh, or have potential savings of upward of a quarter million dollars, and that's just for one small business. Wow. So, uh, and families, you know, one small family of three people, the $1,000 a month we saved them after we reworked their insurance to a high deductible plan and after we actually added in the fee of our clinic, $1,000 a month. You know, you can do the math, $12,000 a year, you know, fully funding an HSA, even worst case scenario, they hit their, their $5,000 deductible. They still have a thousand left in their HSA and six grand in the bank. So, seven thousand dollars in your pocket and all the care you need. You know, some of the naysayers say, "Well, you know, you're 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 cherry picking. You're going, you know, just for the wealthy." Concierge medicine in the in the past has definitely done that, but we found that when you target the one percent, there's only one percent of them. So you're missing out on ninety nine percent of the market share. So, from a business standpoint, you know, there are. There's Neiman Marcus and there's Walmart. And Absolutely, and you're the ne- you're the Neiman Marcus of the uh, mm-hmm. the medical profession. But how would this trickle down, if you will, uh, if um, if the Walmart uh, if the Walmart patients were targeted by by other oh, uh, offices? That's just it. I mean, we're we're more the Walmart than the the Neiman Marcus. We you know for ki- kids are ten dollars a month and most adults are fifty dollars a month. People spend more than that on Starbucks. Okay, yeah, absolutely. So for us, the goal we knew we had to be affordable. Uh, and in addition to you know, so for a hypochondriac like yourself, the self-proclaimed <laughs> uh, hypochondriac, uh, we offer unlimited care. So you know, in a month's time, you can see us as much as you want. You can text, call, email. You get our cell phone number, so you can call us, you know, really any time. 
And we also have discounted medications and labs, uh, and several of our patients save more just in medication costs than their membership. Well, Doc, so let me them, ask you, we only got a minute. Is this the wave, no, of, the, is this the wave of the future? Well, our goal is to transition as many physicians as we can to keep them from retiring. We cannot afford to lose physicians. Absolutely, and especially with Obamacare, you know, they talk about nurse practitioners or, or phone appointments or, uh, you know, Internet appointments, and uh, some of it gets a little frightening. But, hey, thank you. This is very interesting, and we'll, we'll have you back, okay, sir? Sounds, sounds good. Fantastic. Take care. All right. Uh, very, very interesting. Uh,